All right, everybody. Today is Wednesday, September 20th, and you're listening to the Daily AI Show live. And you got your same uh, uh, awesome participants. We're missing a couple of our fearless leaders, but today we're going to talk about some very interesting um, uh, topics, specifically as it relates to how are you using AI in uh, R and D, or should you be using AI and R and D, or what are the concerns and problems, all that kind of stuff as it relates to the research and development parts of your organization? And I know the first thing that jumps out at my mind, and I'll jump it out to the group here in a second, is the IP concern, right? So you're you're in a company and you feel like you want to use it in R and D. So what does that entail? What does that directly mean? That means you're trying to create a market differentiator. You're looking to create an MVP product. So at that, at the very definition of that makes me concerned about getting models that are going to be um, um, trained on that new process. So is that is that something to be concerned about? No, we talked about how models do not keep your data. They're trained on it, but they don't necessarily keep it and they'll have access to it. So if I were to type in Robert's password is my little pony, it's not going to remember that my password is my little pony because it doesn't have enough uh, instances of that data to inform an output that that is the likely probability of an, a password being my little pony, if that makes any sense. So all that to say, what do you all think? Well, I don't think it'll be too much of an issue when you're using it for like R&D within your company because you're going to be using yours. Right, you're you're going to be using your LLM, your AI. You're not right. going to be using, um, you know, <laughs> OpenAI's Chat GPT four or whatever. Or it'll be your local implementation. So mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think IP um, or data privacy is going to be too much of an issue uh, internally and or, or you know externally like losing. Uh, so you're starting with the presupposition there. that the people doing R and D are going to have their own instance of the language model, so that it's kind of protected. It's behind you know firewall. It's on their own servers. Is that what you're saying? Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, okay. I I also think that you're going to be using specific tools, uh, AI tools, and and remember this goes beyond language models, right? This is beyond just um, or generative AI. Um, there's companies out there that already use their own in-house AI tools, you know, like Netflix and their recommendation engine, mm -hmm. right? That's that's their own product that they developed. So they track everything you do through a net Netflix app, what you're watching, how much you're watching, where you're, uh, the heat map of where your mouse moves when you're on the, oh, on yeah. the website, all of that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. they use their own tools to, you know, derive... Um, insights from that. So, so let's, I, I think that's what that where that's going to be. Now, the power of having open source um, or publicly available um, LLMs and generative AI and things like that uh, will offer capabilities to organizations that don't have uh, or currently have that ability, and they can start iterating on that. Right. Now. So maybe we need to back up a second and let's define R and D because some of R&D could be this ideation that you don't need your own data set, you don't need your own LLM. So maybe if anybody wants to jump in, uh, how, how do we define research and development and what, when, what kind of tools would you say are part of your quiver when actually implementing that? I'll it, give a, I think I'll give a framework for, for consumer product goods. So uh, this is distinct from technology R&D, where you're at the cutting edge and trying to develop some new capability that doesn't pre-exist. Mm -hmm. It's really about finding the little market gaps and or changes to the packaging, the pricing, the presentation, the promises, all those things that, that are, uh, in combination, the decision factors that make a consumer buy a product off a shelf or mm -hmm. off of an ad. So... Identifying those things is really kind of a, a brainstorming process. But if you just put a bunch of people who are experts from that industry in a room and let them brainstorm about, you know, like, hey, what, where, what are some ideas for new products that could happen? That 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 kind of uh, process could be helped by an AI, but you'd really want an AI that had 
all of the uh, sort of the the uh, criteria that are necessary to achieve a new and viable product. And, and so I'm going to give you an, a case example. Okay. One of the things that's really hard to do in the beverage industry, which I I'm recently left, uh, is figuring out how to stand out on the shelf and become a new product against a very wide array of products that you might see when you walk into, say, for example, a 7-Eleven and there's like seems to be 200 different alternatives for an, a, a beverage that's on the shelf or packaged uh, snacks and so on. Well, what AI can do that, uh, you know, it would be very hard for even the most creative team of new product ideators uh, is take all of the images of the packages for a product category and take that in. And then you feed the AI data about the velocity, the shelf velocity for all of those things, which is available from syndicated data sources. You have to pay for that, but you're going to get that. And so then you combine those things and you say, I want you to basically say, I want you to tell me what elements of these package designs are the ones that are resulting in the highest velocities. Now that, that uh, could then translate into an, a, a, an image generation that says, okay, take those facts and then give me a new package for a new product that contains the promises and the images, uh, imagery for the consumer that are going to win on the shelf. So I can see that. Now, I, I doubt that any uh, CPG company has actually done that yet. No, but it's, very, it's, it's a very easy leap. It's like the technology is completely available to do everything you just said. Um, it's finding, you know, yeah, yeah you got to implement it. You got to create it. So that's that's a brilliant use case. And quite frankly, I didn't think of... I, my mind went straight to tech and computers and IT when I think of R and D. But you made a great point that consumer goods, packaged goods, that's that's a whole different version of R and D. Okay, uh, Carl, you had a a point you were going to make. Oh, I completely forgot my point because I was listening to Andy and it was just that's good. Like, oh, that is very fascinating. Uh, yeah, because well, I've never worked in 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 that. So. <laughs> Yeah, thus far, you know, they, there is an AI, there are a bunch of AI companies that are trying to address CPG, but it has, you know, what, what I discovered in the, you know, tail end of 2022 and in early 2023 this year is what they seem to be focusing on is helping the field uh, understand by taking photos and then doing sort of image ingestion and analysis, what's happening at the sort of the door level, like in this particular store, this is what's happening. It's supposed to be a planogram with this layout, but this is the reality. And then trying to figure out how to send somebody out in the field to try to correct that sort of thing. It's a very tedious job to try to maintain merchandising and competition on the shelf. But I think there's an opportunity to use AI in, a, in this way that I described to really you know, make something that stands out change your design, change your, your, your product in such a way that it will in fact perform better. And that, that just goes to any type of creative with it, logo creation or, or packaging on the outside, all that that you're going to is just, it just leads to other opportunities. If you have the tool that can do the baseline, which you said, which is quite robust, that's not very much baseline, but it's like it uses technologies that can very easily be pivoted to another use case within that same department. Oh, here's a, here's another interesting you know, I just, one. Uh, I stumbled upon. Uh, I Don't forget, stumbled it, upon, uh, This is related, and then I'll and then I'll bow out. But um, I stumbled upon somebody who was offering an AI that would create a panel of social uh, personas that would respond to your questions about your product, so that you could actually end up in an, in an articulate conversation with a diverse panel of. Of, uh, of a focus group in effect that would respond to what you were trying to do to determine you know, what you needed to know about how people might respond to your product or changes in the product. So imagine you develop, develop a new one and then you use AI to test it with consumers mm. in an AI that's been trained to be facile with that kind of consumer response. Mm. Interesting. Carl, what do you think? Okay, so... 
I just remembered what I was thinking about and had a couple points too. So the first one was, I think this is where the, uh, the ability to fine tune models is starting to become important where, for example, when OpenAI just re uh, released being able to fine tune uh, GPT 3.5 their tra the training data set is only 10, I think 10 examples, like minimum. So you don't have to get the 100 or 1,000. Obviously, ideally, you should have more. But I think as more models come out and, and when GPT-4 training comes out, that'd be amazing. How many examples does it need? Then just got me thinking more of like very practical sense. I've already done, I've already created a, copy generator from chatbots it wouldn't take that long it's not a stretch to train a custom ai chatbot third party scrape a site just even just using their website but you can add it you know more documents and then the base prompt for said chatbot could be you are a researcher in x industry your goal is to provide me research, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, detail it to what you're looking for. And based on the information provided, you know, and the prompts I provide you, you know, give me research, help me do research, help me create new products, like those kind of things. So you can, I think, like, in addition to fine tuning, maybe you can just train a bot to help you be that research to do R&D. So, yeah, it was just two things that I thought, hey, not only can, you know, chatbots be data retrieval, but then if you feed it right and you point it in the right direction, they can also be R&D as well. Here, here. Sorry. <laughs> hey, my, the the R&D could be go out and find my competitors and then go out and find their websites and then scrape their websites and all the data on them and then provide me a market MVP that caters to yeah. the gap in the market, the gap in, and whatever, whatever data you need, just feed it, yeah. feed, feed. Yeah. The, or whatever the, the end goal of that R and D of that research is find me an MVP that uh, fits a need in the market that is not being currently served. That's a brilliant kind of mm -hmm. very, right. that could be a product that you sell to companies. Yes. I gotta get on. That's Carl's. That's Carl's. Uh, I gotta. I gotta uh, leave right now. Yes, Robert, I gotta, that's I gotta, I gotta go. Don't talk about it. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta we're, go. we're working on a product. <laughs> we're working on a product go. that's kind of similar. That basically, because we do digital marketing for small businesses, so we go out if we're trying to get a client. We be we basically go out to that client. And before we talk to them, we scrape all of their social media, all of their reviews, all of their SEO and be like, you know, we maybe send them a drip campaign. We say, you know, your your average rating is two stars on Yelp and your uh, average traffic. You start saying these data points that say, you know, did you know this about your business and about your Internet exposure? And we can help with that. We can help with that. We can get constantly saying so it's a it's an automated campaign that is created uh through analyzing so it's it's one version of what you just said but it's not r d it's more um yeah 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 that, that really seems like it'll be a um you know it'll be the the standard operating procedure oh, sure yeah. for, for the groups you know it's like every agency will be doing this now it's like you've got to do this to compete and things like mm -hmm. that now yeah. i love that right. i love that okay. and and part of what is distinct about what A brings to the table is that it can happen in such a rapid fashion, right? The the inspiration or the analysis, the the finding of um, unique or or twist um, like semi unique, right? Like that's a <laughs> that's not a word that exists, but <laughs> oxymoron, um, I think <laughs> semi unique. Um, but that that AI can do that so quickly and then test it so quickly that the results that you get is um, is just more like you've wasted far less time, right? You're making you're making informed decisions based on more information in a much more rapid 
part of time. And again, we're totally early. So if you are a business doing this, um, you're likely outpacing your competition. That's a brilliant point, outpacing the competition. I can't, I'm constantly hearing that, you know, the people that are listening to this or even the people that are on this, uh, this round table, you probably think, I don't know enough. I, I'm constantly thinking I don't know enough, right? And I'm thinking, um, you know, I'm, I have anxiety that I need to continue to learn because it's, it's passing me by, right? I'm constantly like, I got to hurry up and learn. And the, the realization, the reality is that, wow, people are still, what is ChatGPT? Like, they're still like that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I, that's, that's pretty crazy that, that there's so few, so many people still not using it. But so um, how do we, how do we suggest people, viewers, our, our tens of viewers, um, how would we suggest that they, hey, Ann. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ann. <laughs> so how do we suggest they in institute this in their organization if they get pushback and how do they, how do they respond to pushback from leadership or whatever on using AI to help with ideation and R and D? I, I feel you have to show like it, it, <clears throat> there's, I, I'm all the businesses that, we've done discovery calls to and then followed up what we're the the finding is we, you wow them with you know all the cool things that ai could do but unless you actually get them to to integrate ai into their workflow like daily workflow it's just going to be hey that's cool but I can't, I, I don't have time to learn a new thing. And yeah, for a lot of people, it's like this big nebulous thing to learn, right? New tools, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time too, that excitement has to be kept up. So those are the challenges for folks like us, whether inside an organization, consulting, helping other companies, whatever it is, there is a need to, to get that, continue that that excitement within the company or just continue that process. So when you go back to R and D, like it just, to me, that just fits into there. How do you get these companies to continuously use it? Because you can't just use it once and it's over. It has to be used over and over and over and has to start, you know, filtering into pretty much every single thing that you do to make you like that, not expert, but productive using AI. Or you feel you feel the benefits, or you know reap the benefits, rather than just oh I kind of googled something, it kind of didn't fit my needs, so AI uh, I don't know why I didn't want to learn it. Yeah, it's so, almost like your it's muscle it's muscle memory for the mind. Like you have to retrain your muscle memory, all your all your go tos, your baseline of how you operate and your workflows and your and like I go to this tool for this in order for me to help me accomplish this task. You really have to completely pivot and like you said you got to stop doing the old way you got to force yourself to learn this new methodology or this new training and you and i guess to jump ahead to tldr which was way ahead and i always had time for that my first thought is you got to stay curious you got to continually be insatiably curious and want to dive into this stuff otherwise you're you, if you try to be complacent you're going to be stuck in your old rut sorry beth mm -hmm. what were you gonna say well, I was just going to say that one of the pieces in this that I think we don't talk about often enough is not just building the curiosity in individuals, but building the community. So we all met in a mm. community of people who are in, uh, a little AI crazy, um, and you should hire all of us. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, And we now gather together Monday through Friday and have AI conversations. Like we are learning and exploring in ways that benefit each other, right? We talk yes. about forming AI councils. We talk about doing, um, I, I just think that that's a piece that is important to also infuse. Find the people who are interested and curious and want to play and give them opportunities to come together that's and a, then a, a way to report out to share what they're doing. 100% brilliant point, Beth, because you know there is just so much you can put in front of your two eyes in a given day so much you can read so much you can hear there's you know and so the seven of us are constantly saying did you hear about this did you hear about this like no <laughs> ai exchange is the same way it's like 
I, I didn't know about that. So it also allows those each one of your minds to curate all the garbage and come to this session and to this group and say, did you hear about this? And, and it could be a list of 30 things you heard, but this is the most impactful that in your mind. So that right there, we're curating the content for each other. So definitely having a community to jump onto. But I love Ann's point here and what she's doing with her clients. And and it's I, we call it at WSI the, the, the Trojan horse. Like you get in there with something that's easy and identifiable and, and low-lying fruit and easy to, to understand and get them to, to do something with it. And it, obviously this is not a product. This is just go after this task, the thing that you hate I, doing. So good I'm, point. I want to add to Ann's point about how this actually advances R&D. Okay, in good. a company where you're working – in the sort of the flow of all of the daily task demands, it's very hard to step back, take a sort of an elevated perspective and start to be creative and try to imagine, like add some imagination to what we could do. And, and if you could get AI to remove, uh, you know, a number like Anne's worst, you know, most hated task, and then a few other over time, Mm -hmm. The people who are actually steeped in the business and are thinking about it, but don't have time to think about it, will start to be much more creative. And that will advance the innovations that are necessary for you to be much more competitive in the market space. Right. 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 That's brilliant. Yeah, that, that speaks to things like, you know, find out who your, your change agents are going to be. Right. Get those people motivated, get them educated. Hey, try this one thing. Take this back to your department or your group and and go from there. So so that, like Carl's point is, is you're using it every day. That kind of thing. And right. the rote and parts, the daily rote parts of your job, automate those. Like let yeah. AI take that over and and allow the the uh, allow AI to also assist you as humans in the creative process. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a hackathon. Maybe that's sponsoring a hackathon in your yeah. organization, right? Like we're going to come together. We're going to look at what we do. <laughs> we're going to think of it in the context of automation, mm -hmm. right? Like, or augmentation or, or um, obviously probably you're having a little bit of a training session before you do that. So people have a sense across the board of what I, I could do. But, um, but then you have, you give people time to think of like, all right, what is, what would I love if I never had to do it again, right? Like, mm -hmm. or I just had to check it on the back end, right? That starts getting mm -hmm. people excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've found within uh, organization, especially monolithic organizations, um, if you just follow the golden rule of um, what can I do to make their, life e their lives easier, right. they'll, they'll love you for that. And so AI is a perfect opportunity for that. It's like, oh, well, let me identify your problem. Let me take care of it for you. And with AI, I can make it automated. And uh, then, uh, then the response from that is is always positive. I've not run into a situation where uh, where that hasn't been a huge boon for me. And, uh, you know, I, that, I have to make a joke first. Hold on, hold on. I gotta make a joke. I gotta make a joke. Hey, Ann, did you make sure they put new cover letters on the, because I'm not sure you know this, but we're putting new cover letters on the TPS reports. So <laughs> that's an office space reference in case you didn't know. All right. What is a TPS report? <laughs> Total productivity sales report is what I termed it when I was. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> but it's from <laughs> office space. If you saw that movie, it's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway. I'm right, sorry. Carl, yeah, I own a red stapler. I just want to expand on what Beth said in terms of a hackathon. Now, we've recently had a AI science fair. I think the projects are all over the place. But for in our topic of R&D, why not make the topic, hey, research and development, use AI in whatever way capacity to help R&D, either R&D new products, R&D, you know, competitors, what are competitors doing? What are the gaps in the market? what our consumers are looking at right now, like make it super broad, but folk hone in your hackathon or your whatever you're planning to do as a group, as a company, hone that in and get everyone that that'll be like, instead of just a broad scope, like, Hey, build whatever build like for this purpose. I think that's an, a so, really so cool is that, is that, does, how, how does that differ from a SWOT analysis? Uh, Fun. Well, 
<laughs> well, I mean, like, his, fun, yeah. his, you're doing the same analysis to understand your current place and your future and what your the gaps in your offering is. And so a SWOT analysis kind of does that framework, you know, strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats for those who don't know. But you're giving you're giving the opportunity. You're you're in addition to that, which is I think that's a, a, a great way to do it. But you're also giving the various teams what like, for example, your product um, team yeah. or your engineering, right? The ability to actually create new products using AI. So it isn't just a analysis. It's like, hey, if you actually using AI, you know, create a new product, let's see it. Let's see okay, what it is. Yeah, so, so maybe it's not just a hackathon. It's a MVP R&D hackathon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love it. Right. And, and every department will come at it differently. You know, if you had the accounting team come at it, they're going to come at it with, I want, it's obviously got to be financially profitable or whatever. If you have sure. the sales guys, you're like, I want something I can sell <laughs> or whatever. Right. But imagine you take all the f out like feedback That's and you, say, you feed that back into the AI. <laughs> and you're going to say that? Like, okay. <laughs> give me like, of Some all right. these things, what is the product that you'll come up with? And then maybe you'll get AGI. That's cool. Whatever right. it is, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Maybe you'll a chocolate bar. Who knows? Right. Yeah. And you've also given people, um, like when you're training people, you've given people space to then implement the training that they've received in their own arena, right? So you're reinforcing the learning in a bunch of different ways. And that, uh, what, one of the things that, that is said um, about AI is that it raises the skill or raises the output or quality of your lower performers, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, in a higher ratio than of your higher performers, but it also raises them too, right? So you're sort of uh, all both floats, but the low boats float, you know, uh, more in line with the, with the higher boats. And that in a community, right, in your team doing a hackathon, that just seems to me to be um, like a really great way of reinforcing what you want to um, support moving forward. Yeah. What we've point. been talking about is trying to uh, foster innovation and innovative thinking within the organization. And I, right. I, I want to just go outside the organization walls and say, okay, what if you put on your website a chat bot, the purpose of which is just to field uh, um, suggestions from your interested, uh, you know, consumers and or, uh, you know, business partners about, right. you know, what we could do better as a company. And it's a suggestion know, I, box. I, I think yeah. about this yeah. primarily in the consumer products context, but I, I've rarely seen an opportunity on a website to say, hey, you know what I think you should do? <laughs> is right. you should have a product like this. And then of course, AI can, can assemble all of that in real time and, and organize it and, and come out with a report every week saying, yeah. here's what our consumers are saying are the issues here. It's, it's going beyond sentiment analysis to actually collect ideas from your constituents. And the right. chatbot can actually do the research with the customer, right? Like, I would like to see you come out with purple shirts. Wow, right. that's really interesting. So <laughs> what is it about the purple shirt that you really want, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. you can literally right. drill down yeah. into uh, identifying, like, uh, who is this market and, and what do they care about? Jimmy, you're dropping your ball. I know, I know. I'm just trying to get in here. There's all some great, great topics everyone's talking about. So let's just do the TLDR real quick. And uh, what we'll pose here is what is the one uh, use case or application uh, that you think is going to be most used or most uh, applicable for uh, R&D initiatives and AI in that role? Go. The best would, product? No, I'll, start that. I'll start with... Anybody who is listening to this in any company right now, go to whatever your favorite LLM and actually ask, you know, put in your or your category, your industry, your company, and maybe even some of your competitors and say, you know, what are the gaps in the market? Like actually do ha, try to do an R&D just with an LLM, just with a couple prompts and see where go down that rabbit hole and see where it takes you. 
That's a good point. I think the definition of, of R and D is rabbit holes and you, you kind of have to have a little bit of a curious nature by, 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 by nature, a curious mind by nature in order to actually take those steps. Some people kind of get brick walled or, or, or have a, what do you call it? A uh, writer's block. So I'd love if that would be possible, but um, I'm not sure everybody is built that way, you know, but anyway, I'm not trying to push back with my TLDR. My, my TLDR is to be curious and, if you're curious, then it's going to yield results. I'll say uh, in order to invent in alignment with what your customer demand is, uh, you need to know what that is. And so it, implement AIs that help you understand your market. Yep. And I'm going to say we talked a lot about um, doing... Uh, looking at what you want to get rid of, right? To, sort of coming to it from a pain point or a negative point, but don't sleep on what you're doing really well. How can AI amplify that, expand that, make that more mm -hmm. efficient? Um, yeah. So find your entry and uh, and imagine. Awesome. Uh, and I will go a little off of what Beth mentioned uh, earlier in the show. Um, let's look for, uh, but I'll go externally. Um, I think you should look for collaborative partners, building that community, uh, to, yep. to build the, the wave that you need of uh, motivation. And so that can be private and partner, uh, uh, public partners, uh, engaging with, um, your government bodies and, and things like that. Cause all those external sources can help you um, gather, uh, you know, various companies and various organizations to then help you develop, um, whether whether it be tech, like Robert was saying, or um, you know, where the future, uh, and that's kind of where I see R and D. Mm -hmm. Well, is everybody is everybody did give a TLDR? I think they did. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, thank you everybody for listening. It's been a great topic to talk about. Hopefully, it was helpful. Um, and we'll soon be back just, just tomorrow, 24 hours. You'll see us again. <laughs> so, <laughs> cheers. Shocking, but joy. true. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Aloha. Happy hump day. <laughs> <laughs>